जय राघ Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Ja
Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda So today was the uh, appearance day of Srivas Pandit and the, one of the members of the Panchatattva Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda it's also the disappearance day of His Holiness Sridhar Swami Maharaj from the ISKCON Society. Today is His disappearance day. I think it's today is the uh, 17th year. I believe it's the 17th year since he departed on this day. So we'll mention Maharaj also. Um, <coughs> Okay. She was Pandadara, she ram Pandita. She was Pandita, she ram Pandita. Do we buy, do we saki, Jagata, Vidat, Vidita? Do we buy, do we saki, Jagata, She was a Pandadara, she ram Pandita. She was a Pandadara, she ram Pandita. Do we buy, do we saka? Jagate Vidita Shivasa Panda Arashi Rama Pandita Shivasa Pandita Arashi Rama Pandita Dui Bai Dui Saka Jagate Vidita Dui Bai Dui Saka Jagate Vidita Shivasa Pandita Srivas Pandit Srivas Pandit Ara and Sri Rama Pandit Sri Rama Pandit Dui Bai Two Brothers Dui Saka Two Branches Jagate In the World Vidita well known. <coughs> the two brothers, Sri Vas Pandit and Sri Ram Pandit, started two branches that are well known in the world. In the Gora Gonadesha Deepika, verse 90, Sri Vas Pandit, Sri Vas Thakur, is described as an incarnation of Narada Muni, and Sri Ram Pandit, his younger brother, is said to be an incarnation of Parvat Muni, a great friend of Narada's. Srivas Pandit's wife, Malini, is celebrated as an incarnation of the nurse, Ambika, who fed Lord Krishna with her breast milk, and also noted his niece, Narayani, the mother of Vrindavan Das Thakur, the author of Chaitanya Bhagavat, was the sister of Ambika in Krishna Leela. We also understand from the description of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavan that after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's acceptance of the sannyas order, Sri Vaspanad left Navadvi possibly because of feelings of separation and domiciled at Kumara Hatta. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare. Hare. Prabhupada ki jai. So Gorda Gorda Deshti Pika is Kavi uh, Kavi Kanapur, and he uh, 
copy of, compile the uh, listings of all the personalities who appeared in, bo in both Gore Leela and in Chaitanya Leela. So we know who it is in Chaitanya Leela, who they were in, in uh, Krishna Leela. So here we hear about a little bit about uh, Srivas Pandit. <coughs> so Srivas Pandit is one of the members of the Panchatattva. Panchatattva makam krishnam bhakta rupa svarupakam bhakta avataram bhakta kyam namami bhakta shakti kam. So he is, uh, as is, I'll, I'll read here from Gorada Gonadeshti Pika. Hmm. I shall now similarly explain the meaning of these two words. In the Panchatattva, the Bhakta Rupa, form of devotee, is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who formerly appeared as Sri Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj. The Bhakta Swarup, devotee incarnation, is Lord Nityananda, who formerly appeared in Rajabhumi as Lord Balaram. The Bhakta Avatar, devotional manifestation, is Lord Advaita, who is non different from Sada Shiva. The Bhakta, pure devotee, is Srivas and other great devotees as well. The Bhakta Shakti, devotional energy, is Gadadhar Pandit, the foremost of all Brahmanas. <clears throat> That's from Guru Deshtipika. <coughs> we'll read something else. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda Abhaduta, and Lord Advaita are all incarnations of the supreme, exalted personality of Godhead. And they are known by the title Prabhu, Master. Among them, Lord Chaitanya, who is an ocean of mercy, is known as Mahaprabhu, the great master. And great personalities like Lord Nityananda and Advaita are known as Prabhu, Master. All are known as Goswami, Master of the Senses, Gadara is called by the title Dvija, Brahmana, and Srivas is called by the title Pandit, Learned Scholar. These are the titles of the members of the Panchatattva. Okay. I constantly worship the companions of Srivas Thakur, who is like the well wishing tree of devotional love for Sri Chaitanya Chandra. Sri Gadadhar is an expansion of Radharani and Sri Vas is an expansion of Narada Muni. In other words, they are the internal and the devotional energy, respectively. Sri Vas's younger brother, Sri Ram Pandit, was his close friend named Parvat Muni. Sri, Vas, Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur has sung the praises of Srivas Pandit in this way. It was in Srivas Pandit's house that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enacted his pastimes of Sankirtan. These four brothers, Srivas, Sri Ram, Sri Pati, and Sri Nidhi, were continuously engaged in singing the names of Sri Krishna. They worshiped Krishna and bathed in the Ganga three times daily. These four brothers lived in the district of Hatta. Later on, they came to reside on the banks of the Ganga. They, they regularly used to attend the house of Sri Advaita to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, the glories of Krishna's holy name. Gradually, the brothers became very close friends of Jagannath Mishra, who was, of course, the father of Lord Chaitanya. In all the matters, Srivas was the leader of the four brothers. By the strength of his devotion, he could understand Sri Krishna was going to appear in the house of Jagannath Mishra. Srivas Pandit's wife, name was Malini Devi, she was a very close friend of Sachi Devi and was always very helpful to her. Hmm. Since previously Malini Devi was engaged in attending upon Sachi 
Devi, Srivas and Jagannath Mishra came to her at this time and hinted that she was especially needed now. As so Srivas and Malini gave Sachi, not Devi and Jagannath much advice how to raise their new son. Srivas and Malini were just like a mother and a father to Gaurasundar. Because young Nimai Pandit seemed to have grown arrogant by his scholarship, one day Srivas decided to give him good counsel. <laughs> Why do people study? So that they might understand what is devotion to Krishna, he told Nimai. If by scholarship one doesn't gain devotional to Krishna, then how will that learning help him? It simply becomes tedious, which in the end is nothing but a waste of time. If you actually have learned something, then begin your worship of Sri Krishna right now. This is the purpose of your life. So Sri Vas is instructing little Nimai. Nimai laughed as he replied, by your mercy, certainly that will come to me. If, all, if you all kind enough to me, then definitely I will attain devotion to Krishna's lotus feet. Mm. One day in ecstatic mood, Lord Gauranga entered Srivas' house asking, <coughs> Srivas, who do you worship? Who do you meditate on? Now with your own eyes, see that person standing before you. Saying that, this Mahaprabhu entered the deity room with Srivas within the house of Srivas Pandit <coughs> and sat down on the Singhamsan of Lord Vishnu, revealing his own forearm form, holding a conch, disc, lotus, and flower. See this form, Srivas. Srivas was totally stupefied. Sri Gauranga then said, Due to being called by your Sankirtan and the loud roaring of Sri Advaita Acharya, I have left Vaikuntha and decided to come upon this material world accompanied by my eternal associates. And I will destroy the miscreants and deliver the pious. Now, without fear, you can chant my glories. Hearing these words from the Lord, Lord Srivas Thakur fell to the ground, offering his obeisances. Then he began to recite beautiful hymns. This is from Madhya Lila 2, 272. This is spoken by Srivas. My obeisances at the lotus feet of the support of the entire universe, Vishrambad whose bodily color is like that of a newly arrived rain cloud, and wore, in which he wore garments which are the color of thunderbolts. My obeisances at the lotus feet of the son of Sachi, who is bedecked with ornaments of peacock feather and a garland of kunj, kunjimala. My obeisances at the lotus feet of the pupil of Gangadas, the beauty of whose lotus face conquers that of the ten million moons. My obeisances unto your lotus feet, you carry a buffalo horn, a stick, and a flute. The four Vedas proclaim, you are the son of Nanda. Unto you, my dear Lord, I offer my obeisances again and again. If you're feeling sleepy, that's because it, the speaker is tired too. <laughs> when the speaker is tired, he puts everybody to sleep. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Srivas continues, today my birth, my activities, my everything has become successful. Today my, ha my existence has been crowned by auspiciousness. Today, my forefathers have finally brought food to my house. 
which has become blessed. Today, the great fortune of my eyes has been has come beyond calculation. I see that person who is the who is served by the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi Devi herself. So after Srivast describes the glories, of, then he re, then <clears throat> Go Glory Shunder showed him more compassion by revealing himself to all of Srivast Pandit's family members. Seeing the niece of Srivat Pandit present before him, Mahaprabhu called her, Naraini, call about Sri Krishna with tears in your eyes. <laughs> and immediately this little girl, who was only four years of old age, in a delirious frenzy, began to cry out, Hare! Krishna! Krishna! Hare! Krishna! And she was shedding tears incessantly. In fact, her whole cloth all her, was soaked with tears and she fell down to the ground. Seeing Narayani totally agitated, Shiva's wife and even the household servants began also shedding tears. The courtyard of Shiva's took on a very beautiful appearance, being decorated with ecstatic love for Lord Krishna. Might take me a while here. <clears throat> there was one maidservant in Srivasa's house. Her name was Duki. Alex, his name. No, no, no. It was, it was Duki, not Alex. <laughs> Every day she used to bring water from the Ganga from Mahabhu's bath. One day Gorasundar asked Srivas, Who brings this water? Srivas replied, Duki. From today, her name is Suki. Thus the Lord indicated that those who serve the Lord are not Duki, they are Suki. At this time, Gorasuna began his Leela as the Yuga avatar in the house of Sri Pandit. He started congregational chanting of the Lord's holy name in, ha in the Sri Pandit's courtyard. Nityananda came and Sri Malani served Nityananda as though he was her own son. In the past times of Lord Nityananda, he, he acts as Baladev, he, be be he acts as a madman. He's overwhelmed with love for Krishna. And he sometimes uh, loses his clothes. <laughs> One evening, Gaurasanda, accompanied by his associate, was engaged in chanting and dancing in the house of Srivas. When one of Srivas' sons passed away, suffering from some disease, within the inner apartment of the house, the women began to cry in lamentation at the boy's untimely death. Srivas Pandit, who was outside in the courtyard, understood some tragedy having taken place. He entered the house very quickly and, and he saw the devotees were very good. And he tried to console them who were the women who were in grief. You are all aware of Krishna's God glory, so please restrain yourself and don't cry, especially if the Lord hears you during his kirtan. Even though we might be great sinners, we still, we might be able to attain the abode of Krishna. And that incomparably wonderful Lord, whose glories are sung by all his servants, up and into, including Lord Brahma, was able to console the women in their grief. And he goes on to explain more how they should quiet, they should not... Uh, disturbed by crying. This moment is so auspicious that it's sure this boy has successfully completed his journey from this world. <clears throat> there is nothing to lament about. His good fortune is completely assured. I can understand that whatever part I have played is also crowned with success. 
He told them, if you can't control your emotions because of family affection, then at least don't cry now, you can cry later. <laughs> the Supreme Lord of Gokul is performing Sankirtan. If due to your crying, the happiness that he has experienced from dancing and ecstasy is disturbed, then this minute I will jump into the Ganga and give up my own life. That's how dear Lord Chaitanya was to Sri Vasi. He, was, he didn't want anything to interfere with Lord Chaitanya's dancing. Not a blade of grass moves unless by Krishna's will. To see in this happiness or distress or knowledge of ignorance is simply imagination. Know that Krishna's will is good and thus give up your selfish desires, become free from confusion and an unnecessary botheration. Krishna is giving and Krishna is taking away. That's the one we don't like so much, right? Krishna should just keep giving, right? And when he takes away, there's a, there's a, in the Baptist tradition, the Christian Baptist tradition, it said, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the Lord. <laughs> he gives, he takes. He is always good in both. Sometimes when he takes, it's better than what he gives. <laughs> because we become more Krishna conscious when he takes. <laughs> He protects someone and he destroys someone. Everything happens according to his will. If somebody contemplates something different than the Lord's will, that person only receives torment. Give up all your lamentations, simply hear Krishna's name and thus pass through all the great, all the difficulties with great happiness, then your desires will be fully fulfilled. Having given all these instructions to the ladies, Shivas left and joined Mahaprabhu in his dancing in the courtyard. The women leaving the dead body came to hear the kirtan of Mahaprabhu. And so Mahaprabhu continued his chanting until the middle of the night. When everyone was in the last was at last leaving to take rest, Mahaprabhu spoke. Today my mind is feeling some tribulation. I think some sad event has occurred in the house of Srivas Thakur. Srivas replied, My dear Lord, what possible unhappiness could be when you are personally present? Srivas, why wasn't I feeling the bliss in Kirtan today? What an auspicious thing had transpired in your home. Shivas answered, You are yourself all auspicious. Where you are present, no sorrow can be found anywhere. But the other devotees informed of the Lord that Shiva's son had passed away. Hearing this, Gorai cried out, Alas, what a tragic event. Why didn't you tell me of this unfortunate news earlier? Pandit replied, I could not disturb, tolerate disturbing your Sankirtan. If one of my sides dies, what sorrow is that and that for me? If we all die seeing you, that would be actually better and the greatest happiness. On the other hand, if you have to stop dancing, then perhaps I would have died. My Lord, this is the danger that I feared, and thus I didn't tell you at the time. Seeing the profound devotion of Srivas Pandit, Lord Gaurasanda said, how can I give up such company as this? With tears in his eyes, the Lord spoke, due to, you, to love for me, he didn't even feel lamentation at the death of his son. How can I abandon, how will I abandon their companionship? The Lord continued to cry and the devotees began to worry within, having heard him speak of leaving them. 
Thereafter, Mahaprabhu came to where the dead body of the infant was lying touching. He called boy, the boy, Why are you going away and leaving the house of Srivas Pandit? The life of the dead child returned by, touch, by the touch of Mahaprabhu. After offering obeisances to the Lord, the boy spoke, My Lord, whatever you ordain, that is absolute. No one can do anything but what is sanctioned by you. As many days as I was destined to remain here, that many days I have stayed. Now that my time has completed, I have proceeded to leave. My Lord, I have taken birth and died repeatedly. By this, But this time, at the time of death, I passed away quite happily, having taken darshan of your beautiful face. This is a four-year-old child speaking. Jai Panchatattva Ki Jai. After saying this, the child became silent. Shigoranga Roy thus enjoyed a kind of transcendental sport. Having heard the uncommon words of the dead child, the devotees floated in the ocean of bliss. Srivas Pandit, along with his family members, fell at the lotus feet of the Lord and cried in ecstatic love. Mahaprabhu told him, Since myself and Niti Nityananda are your two sons, don't feel any more distress in your mind by what just happened. Hearing these words of the Lord, the devotees cheered, and that sound resonated throughout the heavens. Proving the statement of the Shastras, the Gauranitayam became deeply indebted to Srivas due to his great love and service for them. After Mahaprabhu took sannyas, Srivas Pandit came to live in Kormahata. Every year he would go with his brothers to see Mahaprabhu to Puri. He also regularly came to see Srimati, Srimata, uh, Shri, I'm sorry, Sachimata, and would spend a few days there during those times. Mahaprabhu came to Nila Chala to see his mother in the river Ganges. He also stopped at Kormahata just to see Srivas. After first arriving at the house of Advaita Charya, the Lord then went to see Srivas in Kormahata. Then at this time, the Lord gave him a benediction. There will never be po poverty in your house. If you simply remain indoors, never even venturing out of your house, whatever you require for your worship will come to your door. Wow. Srivas Pandit, along with his three brothers, served the Lord. He is the incarnation of Narada and accompanied Mahaprabhu in all his Navadvip Leelas. Okay. It's a little bit about Srivas Thakur. We know that one pastime where, where Sri Advaita Acharya was encouraging all the devotees in Kirtan, chant, Goranga, Goranga. Goranga! 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 Jai Mahaprabhu ki! So, the devotees were thinking, how can we chant that? Lord Chaitanya will become angry. Oh, Srivar, Charya, Advaita, come on, chant, Garanga, 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 Garanga. So they were chanting, and then Lord Chaitanya, he heard the kirtan from a distance, and he thought, oh, kirtan, the devotees are having kirtan, let me go. So he went, 
And he got closer and closer, and then he heard what they were chanting, Goranga, Goranga. And he thought, why are the devotees not chanting Krishna's name? What are they chanting? Turned around, left, went back to his place, opened the door, went inside, went to his bed, lay down, and went to sleep. After some time he woke up, and this was in the early morning, and Srivas Pandit was there. Lord Chaitanya came to Srivas. Srivas, why are the devotees chanting like that? They should chant Krishna's name. Srivas took his hand and he held it up high in the air, right where the sun was. And Mahaprabhu said, Srivas, what are you doing? My Lord, I'm covering the sun with my hand. Srivas, you can't do that. You can't cover the sun with your hand. No. But you, therefore, you cannot hide yourself from us either. <laughs> we know. So he wanted to reveal that, you know, all the devotees know who you are. And we cannot help but wanted to glorify you more and more. There's a story where Srivas, this was before the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the world, when uh, Srivas Thakur was going to hear the recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam from uh, Devananda Pandit. Devananda Pandit was more like a scholar. He didn't have much devotion, but he liked Bhagavatam, and he would read it regularly. Sometimes he would speak about it. And he gained a following of some students. And sometimes he would have a public performance where he would read Bhagavatam. So one such time, Srivas came to hear from Devananda Pandit. And Devananda Pandit, he had the ability to speak very sweetly. He was expert at speaking. And so he was speaking so nicely and so sweetly, describing the pastimes of the Lord from Bhagavatam. And uh, Srivas went into ecstasy, couldn't control himself. He was feeling, you know, the bliss of the happiness of hearing about Krishna's pastimes. So it was becoming a problem, at least for the students who were there. They were feeling that he's disturbing the whole talk. So they uh, came, and a few of the students picked him up and carried him outside and placed him on the ground and then went back inside. Uh, Sri Devananda Pandit didn't do anything. He saw what his students were doing, but he didn't try to stop it. Therefore, he committed offense, and they also. Srivas, after some time, came out of his ecstasy, and then he got up, brushed all the dust from his clothes, went to his room in his house, and sat down to read Srimad Bhagavatam. But nothing, he wasn't feeling the happiness of reading Bhagavatam. And then he continued to keep reading. Then finally the Lord wanted to show compassion, so he entered the heart of Srivas. And as Srivas was reading, his happiness was increasing more and more and more. And finally he was feeling the ecstasy of hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam. Later on, Lord Chaitanya revealed that it was me that came and entered your heart just to give you the happiness because Devananda Panda had committed an offense upon you and I was feeling very disturbed by that. So I wanted to give you my mercy in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srivas Pandit heard that in the assembly of devotees at the 21 our Mahapakash Leela by the Lord. And after hearing that, he fainted in ecstasy. Hmm. Srivas Pandit 
um, had a big family. And of course, we read a little bit here that the Lord said, because of your devotion, you'll never have to do anything to get anything. The Lord will provide everything you need simply at your doorstep. It'll come automatically. That's true. If you have enough devotion and you are fixed in Krishna, you don't have to, you don't have to ask for anything. You don't have to desire anything. Krishna knows, oh, he wants this, he's not asking for it. Okay, so he sends it. It happens all the time. Devotees want something, but they don't ask for it. They just go on with their devotional service and Krishna sends it anyway. <laughs> just to please his devotee. That's the Lord, he's like that. Uh, when they, the Lord used to have kirtans in the house of Srivas regularly, one time one young brahmana came in and he was very simple. He was quite austere. He used to drink only milk. That was his only foodstuffs. And so he had heard about Mahaprabhu and he wanted to see the Lord's dancing. But Sriva said, no. The Lord doesn't allow anyone but his intimate disciples to come here. But I can see you are very austere. You drink only milk. So if you hide, you can watch the dancing of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he was hiding in the house, and the Lord just began his dancing. But as soon as he began his dancing, he stopped, maybe a few minutes later, and said, Srivas, is there someone in this house that doesn't belong here? I'm not feeling my ecstasy. There must be someone. Srivas said, we are just here, only your devotees. But since you asked, there is one Brahmana. And he went, oh, get him out of here. And then the Brahmana came running out of his hiding place and fell at the feet of the Lord. And the Lord said, Do you think you can get Krishna just by drinking milk? <laughs> so uh, then the Lord chastised him and the Brahman listened to everything the Lord said to him in the form of chastisement and he turned around and left. Now as he was leaving, he was thinking, oh, the Lord is so kind. And I did get to see a little dancing. As soon as the Lord recognized or understood his heart, he called him back. And then the boy came back and he fell at the feet of the Lord. And the Lord, he again, gave him some instructions and told him, now you can come regularly and associate with the devotees. And he gave him blessings, special blessings. The Lord was like that. He would give special blessings to anyone and everyone simply because of his good nature. One time, the mother-in-law of Srivastakur, she wanted to see the Lord's dancing. So she hid in a place where she could see behind a big, gigantic earthen pot. And uh, the Lord began his dancing and then after some few minutes, he turned to Srivas again and called him, Srivas, there must be someone in this house that doesn't belong here. My Lord, it is just your devotees. The Lord again began his dancing and again he stopped. No, there must be someone here. So Srivas, go look. Srivas was looking around behind the earth of pot. He saw his mother-in-law and he took his mother-in-law and escorted her out of the house. <laughs> we have nothing against mother-in-laws. But this is sometimes mother-in-laws do the wrong thing <laughs> in such cases. So that's another event, of course. Then that one story where there's one shakta, he wanted to come in and see Lord Chaitanya's dancing in the house of Srivas Thakur, but he couldn't because the Lord wouldn't allow him to come in. And so he was very unhappy. So he decided to defame Srivas. So one night after everyone was asleep, he put some paraphernalia for worshiping Durga on the doorstep of Srivas. 
and he had a red rose, a bottle of wine, and various other paraphernalia for worshiping Durga Devi. When Srivast came out, he said, oh, he called all the people in the neighborhood, now you know who I really am. He didn't try to say, what is, what's, what's happening here? Somebody's trying to frame me, make me look bad. This is not true. No, he didn't say that. He just simply accepted it. <laughs> but the Lord, Lord said, of course, none of the people believed him because they knew she was. But Lord Chaitanya wasn't so happy about this offense to his pure devotee. And so he caused that person to come down with leprosy. And he, took, he, he got some leprosy, and then after some time he couldn't no longer stay in Navadvipi. He had to go to the banks of the Ganges and live there. So he was living there with a very severe case of leprosy. One day Lord Chaitanya was passing by and he's, he saw the Lord. He ran to the Lord's feet and fell out and begging for mercy. Lord Chaitanya said, you think you're suffering now? You will have to continue to suffer for many more births for your offense. And the Lord just walked away. His suffering continued. After a few months, the Lord just happened to pass again in that same area. Again, he fell at the feet of the Lord. This time, he was truly sorry for his offense. And the Lord told him, give up this idea. You know, and go and take shelter of Srivas, and by his mercy, he can free you from your suffering. And he did. And uh, he took shelter, begged forgiveness. Srivas was not at all offended. And he blessed him. He said, now you go take initiation into the Gaudiya Sampradaya. And so uh, he pointed him to a direction of a particular guru, and he took initiation. Later on, he became, uh, what was his name? Devananda something. Can't remember his name. But he became a great devotee of the Lord, and he used to glorify the Lord's devotees by writing beautiful poetry and songs in glorification of the Lord. Yeah, that's mentioned. He's known as a very great uh, poet writer. He wrote beautiful poets, and, and they were all in glorification of Lord Chaitanya's devotees. Like that. Complete change. Okay, so these are some of the pastimes of Sri Thakur. Today is his appearance day. So, Sri Thakur Pandit Ki. Today is also the disappearance day of uh, one of the, the one of the world's wonderful devotees in our ISKCON society. They call him the Jolly Swami. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, His Holiness Sridhar Swami Maharaj, who no longer is with us. He departed the world. I believe the date was March 14th. 2004 in Sridham Mayapur, he, he left the world. He was always an ocean of compassion. He was one of the first peer persons to initiate in a very big way the life membership program in India, especially coming out of the Radha, um, hmm. What are the name of the deities in Bombay? Radha Rasa Bihari, yes. He was, many years he stayed in that temple as the resident sannyasi. And he uh, started this program for uh, life membership there and developed it nicely where there were actually hundreds and hundreds of people and maybe even more who became life members. He was a great preacher a worshiper of Lord Nishringadev. He used to carry a very fierce form of Uga Nishringa everywhere he went. And that was one of the more fiercer forms that I've ever seen. Um, he also spent some time in 
what is that name? Koti Nia in some place in South India where they worship Lord Nishringadev, it's called Koti something. Can't remember two words. Um he, I remember when I first joined the Hare Krishna movement, he used to come to the New Vrindavan community and to the Brahmachari ashram when I was there. And he would give these very amazing classes, inspiring all the Brahmacharis and being, being strict in their Brahmacharya, like that. And some of the classes, some of the things that he would say, I won't repeat in public because you won't understand it. <laughs> You have to understand it from him directly. <laughs> he was amazing. Uh, he was very funny, smiling, always friendly to the devotees. Had a beautiful smile on his face all the time when he would see the devotees. He was always, uh, sometimes he would be making jokes. I remember one time when he... Um, He uh, went to visit this healer in uh, somewhere in Brazil. Yeah, it was Brazil. Yeah, you remember that too, huh? He was a very good Christian healer. He had 30 assistants who you couldn't see. They were invisible and they would always assist him in the healing. So people would go there all around the world to get healed. And so, um, and they, he had a wonderful track record. Everybody who came, he would help them and they would be healed. So he went to, Sridhar Swami came. He was also there with his assistant from Croatia, Mayapur Prabhu. They would travel together. He would assist his spiritual master. So when this healer, and his assistants, his, he had some assistants who were there. They, uh, they, the, the assistants he, of the healer, they could understand that this person who came, Srihar Swami, he was a great soul. <laughs> so, and they all believed in reincarnation. Now they were Christians, but they all had the understanding of reincarnation. So they said to him, they said to Srihar, they asked him, who are you? Who were you in your last life? What was your last life? And Sridhar Swami, he's very funny, but he's very humble. So he said, "In my last life, I was a worm in stool." <laughs> I don't think they really appreciated that so much. <laughs> I really couldn't understand it. <laughs> But that's how he responded to them. <laughs> Mayapur told me that. Mayapur would tell me a lot of the stories about what Sridhar would do. When he was in his last days, his stomach became a little big, bloated because of the cancer. So one day we were in his room and he was patting his stomach and saying, it's a boy. It's a boy. <laughs> so he was always lighthearted, even though he was destined to leave the world very soon because of this disease. But sometimes he would, even though he was in pain, he would allow his god brothers to come and see him and spend time with him. And he was always in a good mood. When sometimes the pain was too much and he could not speak so good, but he would always welcome his devotees to come, his, his god-brothers to come and see him. So Sri Hart Swami, I think there is at least 15 disciples in this area here who are his disciples. I, I was told he has 15 disciples who are all from Slovenia. Maybe you know some of them. I know one, it's Mukunda. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Bharat Prabhu also. Bart, Bharat Prabhu also. 
Bhart Prabhu. Who? Kargamuni. Kargamuni. Yeah, Kargamuni Prabhu, Bhart. So many wonderful disciples. I don't know all of the different disciples. Like, oh, well, also Parasaram, right? Yes. Yes, Parasaram is also. Who? Bhagavala. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember the name. But he now uh, arranged his, his own Sunday feast. His oh, okay. Mm -hmm. hmm? Mahavidya. Mahavidya, he's also. Any, any of the ladies were disciples? Jyotir Maya. Jyotir Maya and Gaur Chandrama from Gaur Gaur Chandra. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he made. I was told at one time he had fifteen disciples from Slovenia, like that. So yeah, he's very much part of this temple. And so uh, we want to remember him on this day, and it's glorious. He left on the appearance day of. Um, Srivas Pandit, which is today. I remember I was in Mayapur just towards, just before he left. I left Mayapur and I left and I went to Europe to travel. And then when I got to Italy, I went to Villa Vrindavan and I was preaching there. And one day, it was this particular day, the devotee came in and said, uh, Sridhar Swami has now departed. We all expected that, but we were all very sad when we heard that. He was such a wonderful, wonderful person. He had two brothers, and when he left, his two brothers wanted to find out more about his life in Krishna consciousness, so they came. I think his mother also came to associate with the devotees to find out more what was it about their brothers that was so that everyone, you know, glorified him for, so they came. And I think some of the God brothers met his brothers like that. Yeah. I think it's called Banu Koti. Banu Koti is the place where Lord Nishringadev uh, resides. It's a beautiful, beautiful temple, a big, gigantic compound. It's by a very famous somewhere in South India. He spent some time there. He spent a, quite a long time there preaching. He was very much in the mood of Lord Nishringadev. Huh? He was kind. Very kind. Yeah. And very funny. <laughs> Jolly Swami. He he earned that name. Okay, so this is a little bit about uh, Trivas Pandit and, of course, one of the greatest sannyasis in our movement, His Holiness Sridhar Swami Maharaj. So thank you very much. Sri Panchitattva Ki Jai. Srivas Pandit Abhir Bhav Ki Jai. Il Prabhupada Ki Jai. His Holiness Sridhar Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Gor Pemanande.